Hey Kane and good morning to the rest of you and also the few people who are watching this back on YouTube good day So, um, where we left off before the weekend, was this super low poly version. Which mobile phone do you use at weekdays? Uh, <laughs> why? Why specifically weekdays? I'm using this Galaxy S6. Okay, I see. to uh, unwrap this really quickly and then we'll see how this test bake turns out also want to do the, the pipe thing but that's just going to be a um, a tube a half tube Oh, you're finally using ZBrush. <laughs> Your favorite program already, nice. What did you make so far? You tried to make Mike. It's a, uh, it's a good one to start with. Yeah, might be a little bit difficult though, but the basic shapes are good to start with. 
But I think stuff like his feet and hands can still be a little bit difficult. Hey, Nintenshi. Good morning. Welcome back again. Good evening, by the way. Not good morning. Um... Mm. Side. However, I am missing an edge there and here. This music is going wild. Oh yeah, 2 a.m. It's good morning. <laughs> Hope you're doing good, man. Really curious how this bake will turn out, actually. I think I need as few seams as possible. this and then make a seam in the center on his chin that would work oh come on I hate that random loading I think it's the auto save though okay let's set this apart Cut here on his chin. Get this back and oh, that's a beautiful. Oh, there we go. Huh. It's not bad. Uh, doing all right once again. Don't have any place to be till later in the morning. Well, that's uh. That's good to hear. Always glad to have you here, man. One third of the questions were free points. That's good. Nice test. <laughs> Which polygon number is best to make this mic? I can work with millions of polygons on British advice. Um. Well, since you're working in ZBrush, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can start really high, but in the end you have to make a low poly version of that. Um, I think it should be maximum of 10,000. 10, about 10,000. Maybe 20. 10 is, is pretty low actually. 
But for the sculpture in ZBrush, it doesn't really matter. Just make it pretty. The main objective is to always use as few polygons as possible. Um, yeah, as long as it looks good, yeah. <laughs> the low poly remake I can do with C with C remeshing. <laughs> it, yeah, it works, but it's not super efficient. So I I can okay if, if I did C remesh on this worm as well, uh, then the polygon size you can see here on his jaw. Will also be the polygon size used on his body here, and I don't really want that. I want more detail here in his face and less detail here on the basic shapes. So that's why Siri Mesh isn't working for me because that's distributing the the polygons over the whole uh, over the whole model and not in one specific place. But yeah, it works for. A variety of stuff yeah uh, I think I think I'm going to split it up there But yeah, the Siri Mesher does work very well, especially if you want to remesh it, a uh, Siri remesh it for, or make a new topology for uh, your high resolution. It works very well. Where is my other? Okay, let's split that off. this off and now for the body oh wait let's get the feet first uh oh From the body, and uh, let's cap these two holes. Mm -hmm. bottom that you are not able to see and 
I think I'll just zip open his bag again here. Poor worm. And zip. Beautiful. Easy mode. You've been watching for a bit, <laughs> but I've concluded that I have no idea what is happening. Um, what I'm currently working on is the unwrap for the for the worm. Hey Uber, good morning. So the unwrap makes it possible uh, that I can texture this uh, this worm. So. For example, this UV island, we call this a, a UV island. This is the UV space, this box, and this UV island will be placed inside this box. So I can export this as a texture and I can, I can use Substance Painter or Photoshop or any uh, area and when I paint in this area of the UV box the 3d model knows oh, okay if I have a dot here on this area I will have it on the 3d model here as well right so it's basically a flattened version of the 3d model so I can paint on it <coughs> So, as of now, I'm just defining the islands, and in this case, defining the seam of this new island I'm going to make. So, I have defined the seam here with a blue line. Then I select the whole island and use the belt map function, and it gets the it grabs the whole object and pelts it around that seam and then I relax it to stretch the shapes correctly and now I have this beautiful abstract object that I can paint on so this are the upper parts Yeah, yeah, trying to find neat ways to cut them up, yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Finding new ways, neat ways to cut things up. <laughs> and let's do the same for this horn. Okay, so only the feet left. Fixion 18, how many hours do you have roughly in 3D? Oh, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Quite a bit. But not really in this kind of 3D. Because this, this kind of stuff, I, I think I only started making last year. Yeah, I didn't do this kind of stuff professionally yet. Um, so I I had some, well I had quite some 3D knowledge 
when I started this stuff, but it was all more based on efficient ways of modeling and not really, how do you call that? Not really the time consuming version of modeling, <laughs> which this is pretty much. <laughs> he doesn't have that many hours. Yeah, my videos will be deleted and then my all my hours I put into this are gone. <laughs> I treat this max esteem and keep track of the hours. Yeah. Might be interesting. I think Substance Painter is added to my Steam. So I can check that later. Oh no, no, I think this is the standalone version. Hmm. See how this unfolds. Perfect. Uh, I think Service Painter is on Steam. Yeah, Substance Painter. Not Service Painter, but... It's, it's the same. It's a Service Painter, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it is on Steam. And I think I, I bought it on Steam. Uh, let me log in there. But I think the updated version... I just updated that... Manually. Let me check. Where's Steam? Yeah, no problem. Uh, software, Substance, yeah, this is Substance Painter 1. That's the old version. And I bought, I bought Substance Painter 2 from their website. I didn't connect that to uh, um, to Steam, but Substance Painter One was already used for three hundred and sixty hours. <laughs> that's it's it's okay. Yeah, it has achievements. <laughs> Insomnia launched. The software between 2 and 5 a.m. <laughs> Spawn a million particles. <laughs> Use the fake croc material. God. Use all particle effects on the same document. What a mess. Yeah, that's literally, literally what a mess. <laughs> Change every single key shortcut. And bug reports. Create 50 presets. Uh, it's funny. Oh. Alright.
Chop chop. Can't believe you're chopping up this worm's feet. Yeah. A worm is not supposed to have feet. Worms with feet are illegal in this world, so I have to cut them up. Cool. We have all the islands ready now. However, the skill of all of them is really off. So what I'm going to do now is select this and there is just this easy mode button. That scales it all relatively and put them all together. Oh, actually, this is <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> so the only downside here is that it scales uh, scales this to relatively the same size, and this area. I don't care about this area because that's not something you will see. So usually I scale this down to give some more space to the rest. However, I don't think this will affect the overall size of the rest when I downscale that. So what I can do is just detach this for a bit and let's see if this improves. Ah. Uh, A little bit. Yeah, it, it does improve a little bit. Yeah, that is neato. Does low poly 3D for games have long longevity? Longevity? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, yeah, I think as long as there are, there are um, devices coming that require more, uh, well, less performance heavy stuff. Like the whole mobile industry reignited the whole low poly modeling scene, I guess. <laughs> On top of that, it's, it's good practice to know how to make low poly. I don't need to scale this one up. That's really ah uh, ah uh, well. Don't have to scale it. Don't have to scale it down either. But yeah, you can you can see everything evolving. So even in mobile games things are getting pretty high poly already so things are shifting okay uh, let's bring this one back again and well, this cool. and now we can just scale this down and put it somewhere in this uh, corner. Make sure you don't overlap the islands. Uh, all right, was a short visit today. Going Gonna get food and pass out. Have fun texturing. Thank you, Nintenshi. 
Also, how close are you to finishing XMR? <laughs> Not very close. <laughs> I did some miscalculation. I thought I was on 20% towards the first payout, towards a half Monero. But let me check. Okay, I'm currently on 100 million hashes. That's 0 0.015. And I need to have 0 0.5 for a payout. And that's... I, I think I need about 3 billion? 3 billion hashes, yeah. <laughs> so the, the <laughs> might take a while for <laughs> for forty dollars. <laughs> I've been doing this for two weeks now, I guess. So let's let's do some calculations. Two weeks. A uh, hundred million in. Where's my calculator? Oh there. So, uh, oh wait, that's 36, 60 weeks, right? 3,000 divided by 100, 30, uh, and that's for two weeks, that's, oh. So on this rate, I have to do this for over a year to get $50, $50. So things have to scale up. <laughs> but yeah, on top of that, I'm only using, there's, I think two PCs running here. That's the 170 hashes you've seen right now. But, oh yeah, and, and you are, you're also uh, mining right now. One X XMR in a day? Oh, what? <laughs> if you do 55k hashes per second, yeah. 4.7 hashes for one, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty insane. So there are, how many? people do you need farming this mining this nothing I can reach <laughs> but still I think it's pretty fun and you know I can I can ask for a payout but then what was it? It costs me a, a big chunk of what this is. <laughs> I'll join the farm try hard. Oh, <laughs> try hard is the emoticon, right? Feel free to join the farm fiction. Every support is much appreciated. And also this is only mining when you accept the mining. Because in the Netherlands uh, this was negatively in the news last days. Because there were some big websites that has the, had these miners run in the background without people knowing it. And that, that's really messed up. That's crazy.
<laughs> I get about 50 hashes per second. If I left my computer in 24 seconds. Seven, it takes three years. <laughs> yeah, that's not really effective. Yeah. So th th this only works on a big, sc bigger scale. So that's why I thought of trying this with uh, implementing it in the stream. Not that I have a big reach, but you know, if ten people are mining this, it's uh, it's okay. Yeah, that was really bad. They were doing it without consent. Yeah. That was really bad. And I think you will... You're going to hear that a lot more often. Of websites just mining shit in the background. Um, okay, the unwrap is done. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about mentioning it in the Lethal League Discord. Not sure. You know, I can... I earn a lot more money just by making games for Team Reptile. And you guys already bought the game, so what... Is why would you mine for me personally? Only yeah, you know, only if they think it's cool that I'm doing currently in the stream. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. But other than that, yeah, I don't want to want to uh, bother those guys with uh, my personal modeling stuff. Uh, in my graduation grad school, they call the guy stealing power to mine Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> he was stealing from the cyber security lab. So <laughs> I think he made quite some money then. Okay, let's save this and export this to Substance Painter. <laughs> Just add a minor character in Little League that throttles the player's GPU into mining coins while they're dead in a match. <laughs> Their special makes the opponent mine. Yeah. <laughs> to slow down their PC. <laughs> well, there are some, some really interesting things. You know, you can can implement some mining stuff to to get some currency in game to to purchase skins or stuff like that but mm, that's that's a difficult area uh, let's call this worm ultra low um, I don't want animation <laughs> Make a character that lowers the opponent's FPS for every, every, for every time it's special, yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, let's see, I'm really curious how this will look on the ultra low worm okay I forgot two important things let's just discard this discard okay first we need the material
And second, I think. We have to smooth this. Configuration. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's rebake this. This might take. Some moments. Just let's just skip the anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing. Uh. Oh. Oh no. No. Go away. I think the delay but not, not FPS. That's horrible. <laughs> There's actually one time uh, but some literally guys figured out how they can increase input delay past the cap and essentially made the input delay like 15 seconds and played it. Okay, well that's, that's good to know, I didn't know that actually. But yeah, it should be real, relatively easy to change that. Oh yeah, Kakenrock. We uh, in Lethal League we have the same uh, same thing, the input delay thing. Uh, let's bake this. Sorry if this um, makes the music a little bit laggy. Go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. This is not. Oh wait, it's... huh. It is working... up to... a certain point. <laughs> uh, but the... Uh, fuck. The color ID map is messed up. Should have used the um, material colors from substance uh, from ZBrush here. <laughs> All right, Nintenshi. Have a good night. Thanks for joining me again. See you soon. Um, okay, let's discard this and rebake this without the ID map. I think I think that might be a better idea. Maybe save this as a different thing first. Uh, dragon Worm Ultra. Okay, and now we can uh, 
import this and rebake this without rebaking the ID map because that the ID map oh wait oh crap the ID map does change crap crap Ah, let's let's see what happens, but I think I need the same colors as the previous ID map. Because this will maintain the right colors now, but Okay, let's, let's just rebake everything. Okay, well, in this case, we only need to rebake the ID map. Uh, and then let's just reassign these colors. Uh, reassign. This works, uh, roughness on the belly works. I think we only have to have to find these color selections here. Oh. Uh, Actually, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> uh, mouth inside needs to be. Oh wait, that's that's correct. The face is that. Holy shit! Looks creepy. Teeth, nails, and horns are... Ah! That's a problem. Why? There we 
there is one layer here that really messes up things. This one. Hmm, okay, that's a lot better already. So there is something similar for the... Uh, cavity map, wow. Let's see if we can find that. Okay, this... Okay, this one is correct. This is fine. This is fine. Maybe it's... Maybe it's the distance. better. A little bit. It's still this... This green layer, where is that coming from? Let's just... Okay, it's a draw. See, but because this, it doesn't look bad. So the bake is actually fine. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So the issue is still on the in the um, ID map. Is the ID map so messed up? No, no, no. Let's 
Let's rebake that. Okay, I think this is better already. These are the back spots. And not that one. Okay, this is a position gradient. That's just fine, right? Yeah. Then we have Teeth and nails. Uh, yes, but here. Okay, we can we can paint those in. It's not a big problem. The face, the face looks better. <laughs> Apart from this little issue here, we'll paint that away. Mouth inside is fine. The teeth. It's also fine. Uh, yes. Okay, that that looks pretty good. Color correction. This area as well. See, there is a difference here. But that's good. Maybe we can can utilize that. Eyes, paint layer, color correction, roughness correction, making it all juicy. A little correction there. What is this? Oh, just a back area and the drool is also fine okay okay this this is looking better so the only issue is with
The colors are all... Huh. There's still an issue there. That's in the back spots. No. There's one layer still using the wrong cavity map here. And that annoys me. There we go. Occlusion map from there we go that's much better Okay, let's continue. Including... Uh, no. Okay, add a mask with color selection and oh wait yeah I can just do a levels here and invert that cool that's what I want we need to pick these. There we go. Getting there. And <laughs> beautiful. What's wrong with this green color? Um, good and add these some issues there bah. let me compare this with the uh, with the original higher poly worm See that's that's quite a difference. Uh, let's cap this. Hmm. 
Let's see. So I I like the low polyness. It is going to look really cool if we just have 128 textures and then uh, do I have a different filtering mode here Foreman artist. Thanks, man. Oh, I, I didn't see Starship Trooper. Sorry. Sorry. Nah, I don't know. But yeah, thanks. I'm glad you like it. There are some issues, though. I'm currently figuring out this is my ultra ultra low poly version so that's this with only 400 polygons and there is this version there we go which is the uh, the regular one that's the one I'm going to use. But yeah, I was thinking of uh, making a ultra low poly version, but um, it's cool, the low poly one, but this one is way better. <laughs> it's still pretty low compared to the sculpt I made first. Yeah, yeah, I really like some low poly stuff as well, but there's something going pretty bad with the with the color maps of the low poly one, and that sucks. <laughs> but that's something for the next time. So instead of using a U-Shift and a Mesh ID, I just should use the um, Material Color. It only works for FBX. Polygroup or Sub-Mesh ID should also work. Or... Vertex colors. Oh well, that's for the next time. Um, thanks, man. What is up next? Because I think I'm, I'm going to figure out some stuff off stream how to fix the worm. What I'm going to do is assign some colors uh, for the ID map in ZBrush and then export that to, to Substance, but there will be a lot of rebaking and I don't really want to do only some baking in the stream because that will really mess up uh, a lot. It's just a lot of waiting and boring stuff. So, what are we going to do now? 
I was thinking of maybe you um, maybe make some floor stuff for the dungeon and for that I need to switch my screens for a few seconds uh, yeah thanks for joining me and thanks for the follow uh, a foreman artist really appreciate that uh, I'll be back again tomorrow morning so hope to see you there I, I think I will be sculpting in zebras tomorrow which I'm going to start now I guess can I let's see if this works nope that's not going to work oh wait maybe Maybe it does. When I close that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see if this works. Going to open the, the dungeon uh, I've been working on last year. I really want to add the uh, worm to the dungeon as well. So here's the dungeon so far, but I don't have something for the ground yet. This is some concept art by Baldi for the floor. And maybe I should just sculpt that let me find the concept art for that wow it's really dark not sure if you can see it but yeah it's pretty fucking cool But mm. I'm just thinking how I can what's the best way to tackle this? Because I maybe, maybe it's the best way to just start with these shapes in 3ds Max, actually. Also, the fact that's not symmetrical, I, I hate that. Hello. That's a good idea, a form an artist. Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> I'm just figuring out how I'm going to, to tackle this. I think I will start this in 3ds Max to just block this out and then bring this bring this to ZBrush. 
Yeah, thanks for joining me, uh, A4 man. Yes, let's just go uh, save, yeah, save my changes. Let's just bring this in, in 3ds Max, I think. I think that's the best way to start this. Or... Maybe not. Because it might also be really cool to just try to do that with ZBrush. And especially the rounder shapes should be pretty easy actually. Uh, let me see what is faster. In the meantime, I'll have a short break and get some more some fresh coffee uh, be right back
Hello, I'm back with new coffee. Just so you know. Um, mm -mm -mm. let's continue. I want to get this. Wait, maybe... Is this a better version? No... It's as dark. Okay, so I want to sculpt... This floor panel. So this is just drawn. Let's find a efficient way to sculpt this. Going to import that as a texture first. Mm. There we go, there's the dungeon floor. And let's go to a plane. This, I think this will work. Fill, create a new from no. New creatures have joined your dungeon. Oh, Stephors. Thanks for the follow. Poly paint from texture, beautiful. Uh, let's just give this some more uh, geometry. Don't smooth this. Will this work? Poly paint from text. Texture, why is this green? Oh, of course. Uh, okay, this works, this works. That's good. It's, it's flipped upside down though. Hello. Another problem is that it doesn't tile, but ah, whatever, whatever. And it's not square. Is this wise? Do I want it to be? Uh, yeah, I want it to be tiling. Yes. On the other hand, it doesn't really matter if this is square or not. Does it? No, I just have to add another layer of tiles over there. Um, do you unwrap UVs in Seabrush and bring it to paint, or do you UV unwrap with another stuff? Yeah, I do the unwraps in. Um, in 3ds max uh, messy 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 okay let's duplicate this and scale this down to the scale i want so i know what I need to add here 
to make it square. Uh, let's... Woo! So, next step is save. Floor. Dungeon floor. So, what I going to try is just this new thing I learned from my good friend Yuri and that is of this like this and then I'm like nope <laughs> what are you trying to do right now um, I'm going to make a low poly version of this first in ZBrush and then sculpt this. So when I click on this, I will get this low poly geometry. Like that. Um, but I need this on. as a flat plane so now I can just move this why is my Okay, so this is the first low poly object here. Let's see if this is still okay. And what we can do now is go to the panel loops. And here we can add some thickness. Um, well, polish thickness panel loop counts one no I want no polish and I want a more thickness oh wait Sorry, we need to... Split this first. Split... Unmasked. So, and there is this tile. And this tile we can... Panel loop into a low poly object. Uh... 
panel to the double sided thickness should be lower. See, okay, this is what I'm trying to achieve and the first one <laughs> is pretty slow. But I'm just trying to define the settings for the rest of the tiles as well and then I think it will be pretty fast. Something like that. Uh, is English a common language in the Netherlands? Will I get by just speaking English? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think most of the people here speak English. Maybe some old people don't, but... Old people don't count. <laughs> Okay, so now when I have this low poly object ready, I can go to a dynamic subdivision, but I want that creased. Change this to four. Oh, something like that, maybe. Something like this. I think this is a pretty neat tile, so let's just write that down for myself, crease, so I can repeat that, crease level 2, tolerance 50 and subdivision smoothness should be on four smooth subdiv should be four okay so now we can repeat that a good thing old people don't watch twitch tv yeah well sometimes my mother watches don't tell anyone. Um, okay, so what we can do... Oh. Uh, da -da -da -da. Is not that. So we should be able to change this at least a little bit. That's good. 
I think. I think that's going to work. And yeah, the next step for that is apply this and then we can add some subdivisions and start sculpting this. Cutting some edges here and there. Maybe this is a little bit too much, but I think a trim dynamic is, is better here in this case. Just like this, just a subtle stuff. Uh, maybe we can combine that with this. Yeah, I think this is a good workflow. I like. We still have the low poly version here. Let's do it. Let's. some more of this Shoop. and one like that Okay, so set the draw size to one. Turn that into, oh wow. Okay. 
Okay. Draw size one and split unmasked. There we go. Go to edge loops. Set this. Maybe we can have some variations in the in the thickness. Cool. We can tweak this a little bit. Oh. And go to creasing. Come on. Annoying that I have to reset that. Two and crease that. And dynamic subdivision and this on four. And that's not increase increase. Uh, this should be on two. There we go. So that was much faster than the first one. Um, let's see if we can can do this circle and then call it for today. I think I need to change one little thing to avoid a lot of pointless sculpting later on. Um, <laughs> okay, and split unmasked. I think uh, do, 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 do. I can I can befell this baffle this Let's see how this looks. See? I think I need something like this. So we don't have to sculpt this edge in anymore and just can just focus on the other edges. 
However, is this going to work with the rest? We'll find out. Um, mm -mm. I have to just going to wrap up the stream for today. Uh, I'm going to continue on this tomorrow. It's just uh, yeah, just continuing this the same workflow. Sorry for the uh, abrupt ending. So tomorrow morning will be. The same time around 8 I'll be streaming again let's see, quickly see if there is anybody I can host for joining me and sorry for the abrupt ending i'll be working on this uh, again tomorrow morning so i hope to see you guys uh, tomorrow take care <laughs>